We stand for integrity, honesty, self-reliance, self-defense, and most importantly, no compromise on our foundational principles. This is America's Voice Now. Find America's Voice Now on Facebook and at americasvoicenow.org. Here's Michael Evans. Good morning, America. You're listening to America's Voice Now. My name is Michael Evans. I'm your host this morning. We talked yesterday about the uh, travesty that occurred with the Missouri Highway Patrol releasing the identity and the information and the personal and private information of 185,000 concealed carry holders in the state of Missouri in direct violation of state law. Governor Nixon has denied that the state sent concealed weapons information to the feds. Immediately thereafter, Highway Patrol uh, head uh, Ron, Colonel Ron Replogle, or Replogle, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce his name, but I call it MUD, he immediately admitted in an open hearing that he had actually released the information, not once, but twice. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to see Mr. Replogle walked out on a perp walk, arrested, and charged criminally. And I'm not suggesting it. I'm demanding it. And you should be, too. And here's how you can do so. You can call Governor Nixon's office at 573-751-3222 and let our governor, who denied that it actually happened, which means he's a liar, know exactly how you feel. Jay Nixon is a liar. I don't believe for a second he didn't know this went off. It occurred twice, and I don't believe for a moment that he didn't know about it. Furthermore, Replogle used and abused his authority to gain access to that database as a law enforcement officer, knowing full well that he intended to use it for an illegal purpose. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a criminal act with malice and wanton forethought. What that tells you is that he plotted, planned, and executed. And that is a first-degree charge. It is not and should not be a misdemeanor. It is and should be a felony charge. And Colonel Replogle should be in prison waiting for a bail hearing right now. Nothing else is acceptable. Nothing less will, will suffice. 573-751-3222. And after you get off the phone with, the, with our lying uh, governor, then I would like for you to pick up the telephone, and I'd like you to call your state senator, in this case Mike Cunningham, and in, if you're in other areas, I'd also like you to contact uh, Brian Nieves, because he is a representative who is, uh, he, he was actually the guy who wrote this law, back when it was passed years ago, barring anyone from having access or that information to be disseminated. And I want you to tell him that what they need to do right now is withdraw and withhold all funding for the Missouri Highway Patrol. Stop the presses. No money gets allocated. Their budget window is right now. Between them and the Department of Revenue, I want both of those departments stripped of all funding. Stripped. 100% empty to funding. Not until something is done, until both of their heads are retired or, or re removed and, and charged criminally, and we get to the absolute bottom line of where this has gone. We want an absolute uh, uh, reining in of both of these departments. The Department of Revenue, the Licensed Bureau, which is, is, uh, vi is violating our uh, state limitation and statute against implementing real ID and this uh, Colonel Ron Replogle who needs to immediately be charged criminally and we want all the information back we want a guarantee in writing from anyone it's been distributed to that it has been destroyed properly and with proof and verification and then and only then 
can those two departments have their funding? Oh, and by the way, the state highway patrol is who guards our Governor Nixon. I mean, Governor Liar. I mean, Governor Nixon. And so you watch how fast their funding gets pulled and this governor starts making sure that things get done. Pull the funding, you get to the source of the problem. Watch. So you contact every senator and House member that you have access to and immediately demand nothing less than their funding be frozen. It, their funding will begin on, on uh, May 1st, folks. So now is the time. Stop and end the funding. Your senator can do Only one senator has to stop it. Stop their funding until they are arrested and charged criminally. And we get some kind of verification that the databases have been destroyed. Proof and verifiable documentation that proves that our information is again secure. And anyone else who has been involved, who is, who is involved in this, in this debacle, must immediately be charged criminally. And I don't care where it leads. I don't care how many chips have to fall. I don't care how many names have to come out. I don't care. You're either going to do right by this state and by the people that you represent, or you too will be charged criminally. All right. We've got a couple of minutes left before, uh, before Doreen Hannes joins us. I want to introduce you folks to a friend of mine, Dennis Beasley. Dennis is uh, working this morning with uh, the uh, Spring Camp... Pr- spring pancake breakfast for the uh, West Plains Kiwanis Club. And with this breakfast, they are supporting soccer and local youth programs and other things. He has uh, graciously provided a, a number of tickets that we can give away in pairs. And this event will be occurring today between 6.30 this morning, which obviously you're already late for, up until 1.30 this afternoon. And in addition to that, from 5 to 6.30 p.m. It's a family event. If you bring children under three, they eat for free. Advanced tickets are $4, $5 at the door. But we have a, a group of, of tickets and sets of tickets that we're going to be giving away. So here's what we're going to do. Um, hold on a second. I'm going to cut this caller loose because he may want to dial back and actually get a set of tickets. What we're going to do is um, uh, have, our call, or have callers call in here quickly before the quarter hour break. And for the first uh, three sets of callers, we're going to give away a set of tickets. If, you, if you're interested, you can call us on the Wits End Classic Barbershop line at 257-1111. That's 257-1111. Oh, I guess we lost that one. All right. So the telephone number again, 257-1111. That's the Wits End Classic Barbershop hotline or 866-554-6636. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. caller. When are you going to be taking those uh, calls for those tickets? You got it. You're the first one. Oh, good. Bingo. Yep, let me get your name real quick. Okay. It's Anna. Okay. Vandiver. All right, Anna. You can come by the station here and pick them up right here at the front counter. I'll put, it, I'll put your name on a set of tickets. And um, then when um, you can go by there sometime this afternoon between, uh, uh, well, up until 1.30 this afternoon or until 5 to, 8, uh, 5 to 6.30 p.m. this evening. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Go ahead, caller. Hi, uh, yeah, this is Tony Baker. Hi, Tony. You got a set of tickets waiting for you. All right. Cool, man. Um, this and this is being held down at the uh, fire fire station, which is on Broadway, right near the Civic Center. So um, Broadway near the Civic Center. Yep, you can get instructions and directions when you get here. We'll have a set of tickets for you on the front counter here. We're at number ten on Court Square in West Plains. You can come on in and pick them up. All right, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. Go ahead, go, uh, caller. Good morning. You're the third caller. Yeah, yeah. Well, good morning. I, I wanted that number again for calling Jay Nixon. Uh, five seven three. Seven five one, thirty two, twenty two. Thirty two twenty two. Yep. Okay. Five seven three. Seven five one, thirty two twenty two. Thirty two twenty two. Okay. Thank you very much. All righty. Okay, folks, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we, we'll uh, we'll give up uh, another set of these tickets to the uh, Bill Burris Spring Can- uh, Pancake Day. 
uh, sponsored by the West Plains Kiwanis Club, which is always for a good cause. Uh, they make sure that they support local soccer programs and youth pro- projects and programs within the city. And uh, they will have that spring pancake breakfast this morning between 6.30 and 1.30 uh, p.m. today, 5 to 6.30 p.m. later on uh, this afternoon. And uh, we'll give away a few sets of tickets, and we'll bring Dennis on to chat with us about that. Hang on a minute. We'll be right back. If you're looking for a newer used pistol, shotgun, or rifle, West Plains Pawn and Gun has over 450 firearms in stock. All your favorite models like Beretta, Glock, Smith & Wesson, Kimber, and many, many more. West Plains Pawn and Gun is also a Class 3 arms dealer, so if they don't have it on the shelf, West Plains Pawn and Gun can order it for you. Even those hard-to-get guns. West Plains Pawn and Gun, 1713 U.S. Highway 160 West in West Plains, or online at westplainspawn.com. They say that people actually suffer from anxiety if they don't know where their cell phone is. And you know what they call it now? Are you ready? Nomophobia. There are other phobias like boobtubophobia. That's when you're afraid of missing Judge Judy. Okay, the worst of all is commandophobia. Give Commando Saturdays from noon till 3 and Monday through Friday with your digital minute at 722. The Ozarks Best News Talk 1071 The Point. We're back. Um, we've got a few more sets of these tickets to give away for the West Plains Kiwanis Club, uh, Bill Burr Spring Pancake Breakfast. And uh, Dennis, if you don't mind uh, giving us kind of an overview of some of the programs that uh, the Kiwanis Club supports, that would be helpful. I know that you guys support lo- uh, soccer and some local youth projects as well. We've also got the uh, uh, Zizzer uh Sports program? Yeah, the Zizzer sports gotcha. program. Okay. And so this is a fundraiser uh, put on by the West Plains Kiwanis Club. Essentially, uh, it's the West Plain, It's held at the West Plains Fire Department. That's the one on Broadway, right in front of the uh, Civic Center. And um, to, uh, they are giving away uh, some tickets this morning and uh, doing it on our show, which we appreciate and is great for our listeners. So if you are interested in uh, a set of tickets, what I'd like you to do is give a shout here to our uh, our um, – uh, Wits End Classic Barber Shop hot, Hotline. You can call us here at 257 1111. 257 1111. Uh, just quickly give us your name and we'll have a set of tickets waiting for you here at the counter at some point uh, as soon as you're ready to um, to go over there for uh, breakfast and or dinner. Because this thing runs from 6.30 this morning till 1.30 in the afternoon today. And then from 5 to 6.30 p.m. Fire. And, and don't forget brunch. And don't forget brunch. Yeah, ten thirty is a good time to come have some. Absolutely, that is a, that's a perfect time. <laughs> Absolutely. And by the way, he was gracious enough to bring me some pancakes. And I'm not normally a breakfast guy, but I had pancakes and sausage this morning, and it was delicious. So these are giant pancakes. No, these are the big to, dogs. You're not supposed to tell your doctor that you had pancakes. No, well, my doctor's not listening. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and if you are, you're not. <laughs> Uh, so, folks, if you're interested, give us a give us a quick shout here at uh, our Wits End Classic Barbershop Hotline two five seven eleven eleven, and uh, we'll make sure that we got a set of tickets for you. And uh, I think how many more sets do we have to to go there? Uh, we have two more sets. Two think. more sets. All right, folks, uh, give a quick call this uh, this morning, and we'll make sure that we have a set of tickets waiting for you with your name on it. You can take your favorite uh, significant other with you, and uh, if kids are under three, they eat for free. So, uh, and then we're going to be joined by Doreen, and we're going to talk about a number of issues, including the uh, current um, uh, House uh, Resolution Seven and Eleven, uh, and the Senate Bill Twenty Two, which is the this is this is the uh, Missouri version of the Monsanto Protection Act, being sponsored by Jason Smith, and this thing is still not dead. And so it is our obligation to make sure that we are beating this thing to death with a, with a sharpened stick, if necessary, so that this thing did, never actually sees the light of day. 
So, okay, uh, last chance for your names uh, to be to be added into this uh, this uh, spring pancake breakfast. It's a uh, ten dollars worth of tickets. So um, make sure that you give us a shout. Our telephone number is two five seven eleven eleven. Go ahead, caller. Good morning, caller. Go ahead. Good morning, caller. Go ahead. Okay. That was a, that was uh, th- I think that was Helen Keller calling us. <laughs> either, either that or your doctor. <laughs> or the doctor, right? Yeah. He's just silently giving me his, uh, his his unhappiness. Go ahead, caller, quickly. Oh yes, I love some pancakes. Well, there you go. Well, come on by. <clears throat> Let me get your name real quick. Is this Glenn? Glenn Young. You got it, Glenn. All right, there's a set of tickets here for you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate Bye. you. Okay, folks. Good morning, Doreen. How are you? Well, good morning, Mike. I'm fabulous. <laughs> good. And we'll still take calls on these tickets because we have what, one more set, right, Dennis? Yes. Okay. Um, we have one more set of tickets for you, folks. So if uh, somebody gives a shout in here, we'll uh, we'll make sure we set up uh, we set aside one more one more uh, set of tickets. Okay. So, um, and I know you're probably too far away to to imbibe in pancakes this morning. Um, yes, as a matter of fact, it's uh, you know an hour drive for pancakes. There are going to have to be some spectacular pancakes. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to admit these are pretty. Good. <laughs> these were pretty good pancakes. Yeah, well, so. you know, hopefully somebody who's a little bit closer can get them. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So um, let's talk a little bit about the the issues that are at hand here. One is this uh, issue going on with um, the Missouri Monsanto Protection Act. Okay. And then the other one is this issue with the State Highway Patrol disseminating illegally the names and, and, and personal information on 185,000 residents of Missouri. That's pretty phenomenal, isn't it? I mean, um, by the way, that YouTube video I did yesterday, mm-hmm. so far this morning, 733 views. All right. It so, needs uh, to be 7,000. I get the it. Afternoon. Oh, bye. I would love for it to be. <laughs> I would love for it to be. Folks, if you have an opportunity... Uh, and, and there was only one negative comment. There was a guy there <clears throat> from Canada who made some kind of a comment like, you know, great idea, but your delivery shows that you're a rookie because you were you, you, too much yelling. And, and I, my response to him was, well, clearly you're from Canada, so obviously you guys gave up your rights a long time ago. <laughs> Sounds like a rookie statement to me. Kind but of. Um, uh, that the, uh, there was uh, just a very, very good response to that. So I think that it's important that our, our citizens recognize that, you know, righteous anger is not a bad thing. And um, it is time for us to, I posted a story up on our, our Facebook or our YouTube, excuse me, up on our website and our Facebook page, which is a plan for a, a nationwide strike um, to occur both in states and in the federal government which essentially says, here's the deal. If you're a business, we're going to withhold our taxes. We're going to withhold the employment taxes that we collect from our employees. We're going to withhold our real estate taxes. We're going to withhold paying any kind of taxes whatsoever. We're not going to send the federal government any money. We're not going to send the state governments any money until this freeze is over. And the only way it's going to end is when all of you leave and or we have a there's a whole series of of issues that uh, that are are listed there so um and then the same thing for individuals don't pay your real estate taxes stop paying your credit cards stop paying your banking uh, your on your mortgage and watch how fast this whole thing watch how fast action starts getting taken when the banks start going to the government and saying you guys better do something (laughs) well then the government will just print some more money and but pump states, out more banks, most states, likely. States I mean, can't do that. States can't do that, number one. States right. can't print money. And the Fed can print money, but let me tell you something. With a starvation diet of no taxation coming into them, they can't even print it fast enough. Well, hey, we, we have to do something, and we always have to vote with our dollars. You know, And right now, the public trust has been pretty near completely violated, and we have no choice but to take some action, Mike. I mean, we cannot sit here and say, well, everything's going to get back to normal. We have 16 U.S. Republican senators that crossed the line yesterday yep. and voted for gun control negotiations. I mean, this is ridiculous. Absolutely. We have the Missouri Department, the, well, the Highway Patrol, sending 185,000 names to federal agencies to cross-check 
supposedly. Well, to, for, for investigative purposes. Right. <clears throat> Their words were investigative purposes. So my question is, why are you investigating 185,000 Missouri residents who uh, up until this moment have been law-abiding citizens? Well, uh, law-abiding to the, to the provable point that they, one, have the right to own a firearm, and two, have gone out into the, to the trouble of getting a concealed carry permit. Exactly. And spending good money to get that. So how dare you say that 185,000 Missouri residents are open to investigation simply because they followed the law? Yes. And, you know, and the point is, is for potential mental health violations, okay, for fraud in that guise. Now, what is being done on the federal level is anyone who's ever been on any type of quote-unquote psychotropic drug, which includes Wellbutrin, Ritalin, um, well, Prozac, right. Paxil, Ambien, Ambien. Any, any of these drugs, then you're automatically predisposed to not being allowed to own a firearm. Well, I'm going to actually go one further, and I want you to think about this for a second. Okay. Every time you watch television and you see a commercial for one of these drugs that is for something like arthritic pain or or um, uh, there's nerve damage from... from uh, uh, can't th um, diabetes and things like that. And, and these are not depression issues. These are legitimate medical concerns. There are every time you listen to the contradictions that are spoken of in these commercials, every one of them says that these things, that these pills, whatever the whatever malady they're supposed to cure, um, have uh, the side effect of suicidal thoughts and things like that. Right. which tells me that they're not just for physical reduction of a, of a symptom. These are mind-altering. And I guarantee you that every one of those people who's taking that, whether it's Lyrica or some other drug, right. is actually taking a mind-altering antidepressant while simultaneously taking whatever the nerve agent is that dumb, you know, dumbs down your nerves so that you're, you're, you know, you're... Uh, you don't feel the pain. <clears throat> you don't feel the pain, right. Right. And right, so yeah. I'm telling you that a lot of people are taking these drugs and don't even realize they're taking them. That's my point. In other words, they're basically taking all of these drugs that resolve a, a, a true medical malady and they're injecting in, into that psychotropic medication mm -hmm. as well. And so what you're going to find is a lot of people are taking antidepressants and don't even know it. Yeah. And what's it going to be like when they come out and say, well, great, anybody who's got a history of taking antidepressants, and then they're going to come out with a laundry list that's like eight feet long, yeah. and, and all of these drugs are going to be, all of these people are going to be disqualified from their Second Amendment rights. You watch. Yes. Well, that's, I mean, that's the plan, because they want to put us into a category where we're mentally ill, you know? Right. And Whether we are or not. <laughs> right. Whether we are or not, you know? So, I mean, this entire issue, our society is loaded with these medications, you know. Yep. And, I mean, people So are, are our kids. Yes. And so are our kids. And actually, you know, the school districts usually get some kickback from the federal government if they have a certain percentage of children who are on, you Ritalin know, Ritalin or these ADHD drugs. ADHD drugs, right. And how is it suddenly that, you know, 20% of the, of the juvenile population in our country suddenly needs uh, ADHD medication? I don't buy it. I don't buy it a bit. It's pop psychology and pop uh, psychiatry that, quite frankly, you know, is, <laughs> uh, is along the same lines of the idea that, you know, we can give you a lobotomy with an ice pick back in the 60s, and that's acceptable medicine, right? Yeah, that's not medicine. I mean, you know, please. And, and largely, they're, they're giving a lot of these drugs. I don't know the percentages off the top of my head, but, you know, boys, because boys are boys, and they don't want to sit there and just, you know, continually sit in a seat and not run around and play. Um, the last time we messed with public school, our son was 11 years old, and they had no recess. They didn't even have recess at lunchtime. They had one Phi Ed class a week. And I went in and spoke with his homeroom teacher and the assistant principal, and they gave me a line saying, well, we've been doing this for three years, and children don't have any problem with it. I'm like, you guys are insane. You're expecting, you know, 10, 11, 12-year-old boys to sit there all day long and to sit quietly after lunch with their legs stretched out in the hallway, not doing anything, and you want them to learn how many of them are on Ritalin. Exactly. 
And it's no wonder that our, our country is coming apart at the seams because instead of actually dealing with the fact that young adolescent boys are full of vim Energy. and vinegar, right? That's what they are. Yes. And so, and, and we, we, we limit and block their normal tendencies uh, as social beings and as human beings and instead, you know, dampen them down with all of these drugs and stuff. So right. uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, our, our phone lines are lit up and there's a couple of people that wanted to uh, talk to us about things. So um, we're going to take a quick break. When we return, uh, we're speaking with Doreen Hannes this morning, folks, by the way. And Doreen, uh, who is a, uh, who joins with us every Friday morning, she has an outrageously excellent website. And I encourage you to get over there. It's called truthfarmer.com. That's truthfarmer.com. Please make sure that you visit that and uh, make sure that you are uh, keeping your keeping abreast of what she has to say because uh, she's got some great information up there. We'll be back in just a moment. Pentagon intelligence report that North Korea has the ability to arm a missile with a nuclear warhead. Obviously, they have conducted a nuclear test. So there's some kind of device. But that is very different from miniaturization and delivery. Secretary Kerry in Seoul, South Korea, part of that classified report was mistakenly labeled unclassified and read out loud in Congress yesterday. Retail sales fall the fastest in nine months. And a bench-clearing brawl during the Dodgers-Padres game in San Diego. The Padres' Carlos Quentin tackling the Dodgers' Zach Greinke after getting hit by a pitch. We've got a serious melee going here at Petco tonight. 15 players on the field. Call on Fox Sports San Diego. Greinke has a broken collarbone. Fox News, we report, you decide. Thanks to Jason over at Wits End Classic Barbershop for sponsoring our phone lines. You can call our Wits End Classic Barbershop hotline and uh, you can get over there and get yourself shaved and a haircut. Two bits. Well, a little bit more than two bits. Thanks to our friends over at Pizza Hut as well. On Porter Wagoner Boulevard, they have an outstanding lunch special. And on Tuesday nights, they have Kids Eat Free. Children under 12 eat for free. They're on Porter Wagoner Boulevard in West Plains. Make sure you visit Pizza Hut. Our friends at the Battery Station, 303 Washington Avenue at BatteryStation.com. You can also reach them via telephone at 257-7799. Folks over at West Plains Pawn and Gun. Kenny's a friend of ours and a great supporter of our program. 417-256-3000, located uh, about a mile and a half on Route 160 past Walmart. You can reach him also on the web at westplainspawn.com. Ozark Mountain Self-Reliance, half mile east of Walmart at Route 62 in Mountain Home. You can find them on the web at ozarkmtnselfreliance.com. And you can call them at 870-492-4030. My friend Mary over at Chantilly's Artisan Bakery, the best damn bakery in 100 miles. She can be reached at 417-255-2253. You can also find her at number 2 Evans Arcade. Outstanding Bakery. Bill Stone over at Stone Construction at 2930116. Whether remodeling, building new, or doing some kind of custom construction like commercial or farm work, Bill's the guy for you. 2930116. Howe County Bank, branch of Bank of Thayer, locally owned and operated since 1900. It's not what they do, it's how they do it. Roger Lennon, president of Howe County Bank. Is it true that banks don't have money to lend? And that's just not true. All the area banks have money to loan. We certainly do, and it's just a case of lack of confidence right now. We certainly have money to loan and, and welcome customers to come in and apply. At Howe County Bank, it truly is not what they do, but how they do it. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Weather sponsorships are now available on News Talk 1071 The Point. Get more information, email info at diamondmediaradio.com for complete details. From the Point Weather Center, for this morning, clear skies, sunny through the day, the high 56, clear with frost tonight, low 32. Sunny tomorrow, high 62, mostly sunny Sunday, high 72, partly sunny Monday, high 74. I'm staff meteorologist Jim Minaldi, and for more information, visit my1071thepoint.com. It's a call and make your voice heard on the biggest issues making headlines today or on absolutely anything in your head. Every call I get goes on the air totally unscreened. It's unpredictable and uncensored, and you'll never know what to expect. Anything can and will happen on the next Alan Combs Show. 
And that's who you can catch every weeknight, 9 till midnight. The Alan Combs Show on the Ozarks Best News Talk, 1071 The Point, Monday through Friday. All right, we're going to grab these calls quickly and try to clear these phone lines. These folks have been waiting for that commercial break. And uh, go ahead, caller. Welcome to the show. Caller, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, you had a comment. I apologize, but uh, it's a capitalist radio network, you know. (laughs) (laughs) There is a drug that they put out for people to stop smoking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it causes people to think of suicide. Right, you're called. It's called Chantix or Chantix, yeah. I don't know what it's called. My brother was on it, and pretty soon he's talking about doing away with himself. And his daughter got a hold of the package, and she threw the stuff away. She said, "You are not killing yourself over this." Right. So you can do it over slowly with cigarettes, or in a hurry with Chantix. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know what to say. What a deal. <laughs> but he was calling all of us and telling us he was going to do away with himself. And we're all wondering what's going on. Right. You well, find out he's taking a mind-altering drug, right? Right. Great. And we didn't know what was going on. We were getting worried. Sure. Well, thank it's, you very much for that input. Early. Okay. Thank you, dear. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's thank God he said something, right? Or they might never have known. A lot of people don't. One... One issue with uh, that particular drug, a man was taking Chantix. He got his lunch, kissed his wife goodbye, went out into the garage and shot himself. Got to love it. I no mean, warning, unbelievable. You know, but Where the heck is this coming from? And, you know, <laughs> I mean, this is supposed to help you quit smoking, not, not you know, no. not go look for a tall bridge. Right, exactly. <clears throat> you know, but, but the point of that is, is that, you know, this, these drugs like Wellbutrin and Chantix, they are used to help stop smoking. And... They are also on this list. And right. several years ago, as far as prohibiting the, the possession of firearms, and several years ago, there was a movement afoot to declare anyone who smoked as being mentally ill because the, uh, the meme went like this. If you smoke, you know it's bad for you, and who wants to continue to do something that's bad for themselves other than someone with a mental problem? Unbelievable. You know, so... Um, so you know, you... voting for Obama is bad for you. I wonder if that's a mental <laughs> illness. Go ahead, caller. Welcome to the show. Yeah, just a couple of thoughts, and, and your last caller brought up one thing. That the VA will issue you uh, a script for uh, Wellbutrin. Right. And they did that to me about three years ago, trying to get me to quit smoking. And, well, with, with the Wellbutrin, you take one a day per week. Mm-hmm. And then... Uh, on the first day of the second week, you start taking two a day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, three days after that, I took it back to the VA. And said, I can't take this stuff. You know, I, I'm not me. Right. But that is still in my records. So right. Right. That, so that so now you're now you're a known user of psychotropic drugs. <laughs> right. And, Unbelievable. And right. another thing that, that you guys kind of hit around, but hadn't really said right out. Okay. Once they do get that implemented then they're going to make it like the felons where one person is on his drugs and nobody in your household can have it right, right. exactly you know, it's that's contagious right. Well, that's and scary. that's that right. That's the whole idea with making a felon uh, a felon. If he's barred from having weapons, then his his wife or her husband and their children are all barred from having weapons. That's exactly what they do. One person as, who's a felon actually takes, you know, it's the old adage of don't don't kill the enemy in war, right? Sh- shoot him to wound him because it takes two guys to get him off the field of battle. So you've effectively taken three men out of the fight. Right. Exactly. There you go. Hey, thanks so much for the call. I appreciate you. you go ahead, caller. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to touch on a thing when you were talking about the ADHD that people <clears throat> tend to miss. And that's that most of those kids, stopping short of autism, are also vaccine damaged. Yeah, very we went good. from one, one in a thousand kids used to be autistic. Now it's one in 50, but they forget the ADHD is just that they're partially damaged. Mm-hmm. You can thank the pharmaceuticals and the Monsantos and all those people, those same big corps, for doing that thing, and you got to pay attention. One thing people also miss, cogforlife.org is a website that will show you the most recent studies is it's human DNA in the shots that's causing the problem. Hello. Not just the, th- not just the thimerosal. So so it's now a cannibalism shot. Yes, Can you repeat absolutely. that website, please? 
Yeah. C C O G for Life dot org. There are some of the leading edge research been done through the people that have that website. Okay. okay. C O G as in uh, Charlie Oscar Golf. Yes. And then four is F O R or the number four. Uh-huh. Just four. Spell I it out. C O G for Life. Gotcha. All right. Thank you for that tip and information. Yes. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you, guys. You bet. Okay, um, Doreen, I'd like to just have Dennis come on real quick one more time and uh, kind of give us an update on this Kiwanis uh, breakfast thing that they're doing over here because this is a uh, uh, this is the Bill, Bill Burris Spring Pancake Day. I don't know why I'm having trouble saying that, but for whatever reason <laughs> I am. And uh, it's held by the West Plains Kiwanis Club. Uh, Dennis Beasley is here, and he is a member of that club. Excellent. And they, are, um, they sponsor our local sporting and uh, uh, soccer and uh, zizzer programs. And so this is kind of a fundraiser. Uh, we've got, I think, one set of tickets left to give away, right? Yes, we do. We have one set of tickets left. And by the way, we also sell hamburgers, hot dogs, and cheeseburgers oh. at the Zizzer football games this fall. So there you go. Okay. So make there. sure that you guys are hitting the Kiwanis Club uh, uh, concession. Concession. Yeah. Thank yes. you. <laughs> Thank God for Doreen, or I'd be my tongue is tripping over my teeth this morning. Um, yeah, the, make sure that you hit the Kiwanis uh, concession when you are when you folks are out there at the football games and stuff. So we've got one set of tickets to give away. It is all, for all day today. It runs from uh, six thirty this morning till one thirty today, and then uh, from five to six thirty on uh, this afternoon or this evening. So you can take the family as well. Go ahead, caller. Yeah, I was calling about the tickets, man. All right, you got them. What's your name? Eric. All right, Eric. Uh, have a last name or a first B- initial? Uh, B Lander. B E L A N D E R. You got it, Eric. I'll have a set of tickets waiting for you here at the front counter. We're at number 10 Court Square. And the, uh, as you know, the, the pancake location is at the firehouse on, West Pl- in, on Broadway in West Plains. And it's right around the corner. So they can give you some directions here if you're not familiar. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Bye. All right. Okay, folks, that ends our tickets for today on the uh, West Plains Kiwanis uh, Club uh, Spring Pancake Day. I have to say it slower. I'm going to muff it. <laughs> So anyway, um, thank you very much, Dennis. I appreciate you uh, making those tickets available to our listeners. That was a very gracious thing for you to do, and we appreciate it and you. So, okay, um, by the way, tomorrow I'm going to be at the at uh, Lynette Pate's uh, Hungry for Health event that's going to be in Branson. Uh, I'll be, after our morning show, I'll be going over there, and then on Sunday morning I'll be speaking at the White House Theater at that event. This is the uh, Fuel for the Body uh, and you can. There's two different websites there. One is fuelforthebody.org, and the other is fuelforthebody.net. Fuelforthebody.net has all the information there on where this event is being held at the White House Theater in Branson, and um, a list of guests, hosts, and speakers, and things like that. And there's a whole bunch of. Uh, Bob Wright is the author of Killing Cancer, Not People. He'll be there. Uh, Lynette Pate, of course, author for Fuel for the Body. Um, also, Chris Work. Uh, Chris Wark, excuse me, of Chris Beat Cancer. Uh, introduction by Shan Stratton of Core Health Products and Dr. Patrick Vickers of the uh, Gerson uh, Treatment. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, guest MC is Joe Douse of KSPR News, Channel 33 in Springfield and Branson. And uh, there'll be a whole host of folks there. There is a dinner tonight uh, and then a two day festival tomorrow, and uh, I mean, Saturday and uh, Sunday. So I'll be speaking there Sunday. I'm not quite sure of my time slot, but it'll, I think it's going to be sometime in the uh, late morning or early afternoon. And if you're, you're certainly welcome to join us out there. Okay, um, before we, get, we wrap up, we do have to mention the uh, Ozark uh, Freedom Festival that's going to be held in the Kashkanong City Park on April 20th. I'll be speaking there as well. That's 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And uh, I'll be on it uh, probably at right after lunch or so. And this is the Ozarks Freedom Festival at Kashkanong City Park on the 20th of April. That's a Saturday. And uh, it's going to include all kinds of information about self-reliance and self-sufficiency. It's the theme of the program. And um, <clears throat> it'll be... It's a family event, so you know don't 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 be afraid to bring the kids. There'll be uh, featured speakers on topics including rights of landowners, firearms freedom, food freedom, how to express your opinion to your elected representatives and be uh, successful at that, privacy rights, the negative effects of the Real ID Act in Missouri, and how to participate in privacy protection laws filed against the state of Missouri recently. 
So that should be an outstanding event, and I, live, I strongly encourage you. There's going to be a fish fry that will occur there as well. Uh, Oath, Oath Keepers board member uh, and Montana President uh, Elias Alias will be in attendance as well. Bob Parker will be there. Jerry King, voice of the Ozarks. Jerry Diamond. Um, myself, of course. Uh, a group of Missouri state representatives and state representatives uh, representing southern Missouri. Uh, they've been invited, and a number of them will be speaking. There will be uh, all four candidates who are competing for the 8th con- Congressional District seat here to replace John Wayne Emerson will also be there. And uh, Peter Kinder has been invited as well. So it should be an excellent opportunity for all of us to uh, to kind of share our experiences, our knowledge, our wisdom, and uh, learn some, some new things. And I strongly encourage you to be there. There is a similar program. We've got a break coming here, but there's a similar program also being held in West Plains. I'll be speaking at that one early in the morning. And this is the rally to support the Constitution and the Second Amendment. Danny Page, uh, Command Sergeant Major, retired, will be the prime uh, headline speaker there. And that from 9 a.m. till mid-afternoon, probably around 2 o'clock in the afternoon. That's going to be held at the Eagle Heights Independent Baptist Church. That is at 1078 County Road 8570. If you have questions, you can call 293-9888. That's 293-9888. And we'll talk more about these as uh, the the course of the week goes on. We're going to take a quick break. When we return, uh, we're going to give Doreen the floor because we want to make sure that we talk about this House Joint Resolution 7 and 11 and also the Senate version of that. We'll be back in just a moment. There's one man on this earth who really truly gets it when obama said he seeks to fundamentally transform america he means fundamentally alter the nature of our republic which in turn means to fundamentally reshape society and the citizens relationship our relationship to the federal government the sovereign we the people become the subjects some people follow this willingly some people endorse it i say hell no weeknights from five till eight mark levin on the ozarks best news talk 1071 the area's best selection of firearms and ammunition can only be found at West Plains Pawn and Jewelry. Top of the line handguns from Kimber, Smith & Wesson, Ruger, Glock, Beretta, and many more. A wide selection of ammunition including blanks, centerfire handgun and rifle, rimfire, a variety of shotgun shells, target, and turkey. With new arrivals every week, the area's best selection of firearms and ammunition can only be found at West Plains Pawn and Jewelry. 1713 West U.S. Highway 160 or shop online at westplainspawn.com. If you're looking for great deals on iPads or Kindles, look no further than your neighborhood Radio Shack Authorized Sales Center. They've got great deals on the latest iPads and Kindles. Maybe you need a new GPS or an MP3 player to get your music library ready for those barbecues. Whatever your electronic needs, stop by your local neighborhood Radio Shack Authorized Dealer in West Plains at 1408 Southern Hills Shopping Center or call 417-256-1819. Hi, it's Hugh Hewitt on the next Hugh Hewitt Show. The Republican National Committee is in Los Angeles, and I'm talking to them following my show on whether or not the Republican National Committee actually has a clue on what they're doing. I think they do, but they've got to come to Cleveland. I'll tell you why on the next Hugh Hewitt Show. Sundays from 6 till 7, following Money Talk with Bob Brinker, it's the Weekend Journal with Hugh Hewitt on the Ozarks Best News Talk 1071. All right, we're back. Doreen, thank you for being with us this morning. Uh, you are um, always a valuable asset to our program here. Um, before we get into the 7 and 11 uh, House resolutions on the Missouri Monsanto Protection Act, um, one of the callers uh, on, during the break just brought up the fact that a lot of these parents are being enticed into getting these um, these SSRI um, reuptake inhibitors, which is mm-hmm. basically all of these psychotropic drugs basically uh, under the guise that they will get assistance from SSI for that. I'm not sure. Is that true, or have you heard anything along those lines? There are, <clears throat> well, there are some... In other words, they qualify as disabled at that point, right? Right, for right. disability. There's a potential for that to occur, but... Boy, if, that's has... what, if any parent is actually selling their kid out and having them take this kind of a drug, sacrificing them for a SSI check, I'll tell you what. Um, uh, yeah. I, got, I don't have a whole lot of things to talk about with that parent except a you know a short brief 
Just a whack would do it, right? <laughs> a short, brief smack upside the back of the head might help. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a I have a very difficult time believing that that would occur very often with you know with any parents. I mean, no matter what your political predisposition is. Um, when don't they use your kids for a paycheck. Your child, yeah, you, you know, yeah, exactly. So I don't, I don't. While that may be a potential, I don't think it's, um, it's anything that would happen with any kind of regularity, Mike. You sure. Know? Um, you know, uh, I, I, can we switch topics to the the. Uh, uh, the Monsanto thing. By the way, Sean Rhodes today is going to be at noon. He's going to be at the Civic Center for a uh, like a town hall meeting, and, okay. and I am for sure going to be there. You can bet your bottom dollar, and we're going to get to the bottom of where he stands on this issue of one, this release of information, and two, what his position is going to be on this Missouri Monsanto Protection Act, which I know has already made it through the House, but now has to go back to the House for the language changes. And yes. <laughs> we're going to we're going to push very very hard to have this thing killed off. That's exactly correct. The best thing to do is to kill this. Now, right. um, our, our calls, our actions have been effective, and here's why. When it came to the Senate floor, it got there without even being put on the calendar, which is kind of interesting. Um, but there were numerous senators that offered up amendments to it. There was testimony or, you know, basically debate on both sides of the aisle from both Republican and Democratic senators saying that they didn't like this bill, here's why they didn't like it. Some of the issues were constitutional. Some of them were concerned with the proliferation of genetically modified organisms. Some of them were concerned with uh, the CAFOs, the concentrated animal feeding operations. I mean, it, it hit a whole barrage of objections. Mm -hmm. So they altered the language. Now, all of these bills, SJR 22, HJR 11 and 7, are all in one. Okay, now the language currently reads that agriculture, which provides food, energy, health benefits, and security, is a foundation and stabilizing force of Missouri's economy. So what are they calling it now? They're calling it, it it's still the quote-unquote right to farm. Okay. Okay, and it is a proposed constitutional amendment that, if it passes through, is going to be on the ballot in 2014. Okay. Well, right to farm needs to die. Well, yeah, it absolutely, it, simple message, it needs to die, okay? But the language has been changed, and now it's, you know, it could be good, it could be bad, but here's the issue as far as I see it, Mike. You know how um, George Mason, who was, who was very much a patriot, he was totally against the Bill of Rights because his belief was if you enumerate all of the rights, you end up, abrogating those rights if you forget one like hey i want to eat with a salad fork instead of a regular dinner fork you know that could be inhibited Got so it. that that was his concern and um we already have the right to farm okay sure. i mean there's we have the right to farm but at any rate this this language has been altered and so you got that first sentence and then the second sentence has been changed to protect this vital sector of Missouri's economy, the right of farmers and ranchers to engage in farming and ranching practices shall be forever guaranteed in this state. And nothing in this section shall be interpreted to abrogate the authority of political subdivisions to exercise how, I'm sorry, powers vested therein by the laws of the state of Missouri. So that leaves the issue of local control, which some counties have health ordinances in position, to halt the proliferation of these concentrated animal feeding operations. But here's the issue with this. It's, it's still too broad. Define farming. Define right. ranching. Define you know? who the farmer is, because the whole idea of this thing exactly. is to wrap up the GMO agrityrants underneath yes. the, 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 the label farmer, and which is not what most people think of when they think of farmer. You know, they think they think a, a guy standing out there in a straw hat with a piece of you know grass sticking out of his mouth. Right. And you know that's not what these agri giants are. These are guys who farm in suits. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and they, they farm at the right? patent office. They farm. They in farm the in the patent room. office. And you know what else they do? They farm and they sow seeds of of green 
throughout all of Congress, both state and federal. And then they sit there and they nurture that product and they talk nice to that plant and they occasionally shed a little bit of cash fertilizer in, uh, in on it. Exactly. And the next thing you know, they come back to harvest the crop of a, of a bill passed in their, in their benefit in and their favor. In their favor. For, you know, it's, it's an unlevel playing field. So the best thing to do with this, now it's, it's been altered, and at this point it would go to conference committee. Um, the rumor that I heard was that the uh, the other sponsor of the bill, aside from Jason Smith, Representative Reibold, was unhappy with that idea. He did not think that they could come up with language. So the action item is everybody call up your representatives and your senators and tell them to kill this thing. Now we've got our we on our Facebook page. We have the phone numbers for every state representative and every state senator. You're going to have to scroll down a little bit or just do a search on the Facebook page, but they're all up there. So right. don't anybody say, "Well, I couldn't call my senator because I couldn't find his number." Well, I'll tell you the number to call. You can call the switchboard at five seven three seven five one two thousand, and they'll help you find out who your representative is if you don't know. Well, five okay. seven five one, two thousand. Two thousand. Yes, That's sir. the main switchboard number. You just ask for your representative by name, or if you don't know it, you just have to say what zip code you're in, and they'll tell you who it is. That's right. This is the easy button, folks. You know. So, so the issue with HJR seven and eleven is just kill it. Just for the for the record, I just want to throw a comment on on the easy button mm-hmm. issue. You know, most of our listeners, and I, and I think you know that the, the, these are some pretty stalwart folks, yeah. we generally don't need the easy button, but we don't know who listens to these broadcasts. We put them up on YouTube. You know, that show yesterday we did got 700 and, and about 750 hits and right. views. And so, you know, we don't know. I got an email from a guy who says he watches the show every morning in Seattle Live. And Excellent. so we don't know who's watching. And, of course, he's not going to really – he's in Seattle, so he's not going to call our, our state senators. But, you know, the idea is we don't know who's watching, and somebody else in a different area could be watching, and they can take effect and, and, and you know, have, a, have an, uh, an effect as well. So if we only give out the local numbers and we don't give out the switchboard and give them an easy button, they may not necessarily know. And – even on our Facebook page, we're not going to. I don't have the. I don't have the the representative for some in the northwest corner just below Iowa. You know, mm-hmm. so right. and and this does affect the whole state because it's it a does. constitutional amendment that's being proposed here. Right, and and here's the other issue. There are five other states that have this same language as it was introduced in their legislature right now. Jeez and that's whiz. Delaware, Indiana, Oklahoma. And my brain went darn. Um, I'd, I'd love to know how much Monsanto's actually spending to get this bill through. Oh, man. There, there is no telling how much Monsanto's spending. I mean, they, they spend millions and millions of dollars every year just lobbying the federal government. And they do have a lobbyist who resides at our state capitol as well. Got to so, love it. Well, they're based in St. Louis, too, so right, that right. helps. But, I mean, you know, they grease the skids with Joanne Emerson for, decade, for a decade, mm-hmm. almost two decades. And, you know, basically single-handedly funded her uh, her incumbency re-elections over and over and over again. Now they're working on Jason Smith because he wants to go to the state rep- – or to, the, to represent the state in the 8th District in Washington. They already bought and sold Roy Blunt. Yes. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. Monsanto's favorite crop is Congress people. <laughs> exactly. That's their, that's their farming <laughs> result, right? They, that's the only crop they grow. They grow their permission slips by they, funding their campaign. They grow Congress people. Yes, Let's absolutely. just call it what it is, right? Yeah. They, they plant that crop. It's called the green seed, and it's got a picture of dead presidents on it. And basically what happens is they nurture it with a little bit of uh, fertilizer every once in a while that comes in the form of some more of those dead presidents. And before you know it, they've got in front of them this full-grown live congressman who will do their bidding. Yes. Uh, they, they buy the best... Uh, employees they can at the federal level and they buy permission slips to further consolidate and control the entire agricultural marketplace from from the ground all the way to the grocery store so you know this issue here in missouri we cannot allow this to happen and the other issue is we don't have to delineate every single one of our rights specifically 
within the Constitution. In we fact, shouldn't alter it so the, readily. The whole premise of a Constitution is to be a negative document that yes. doesn't limit the that doesn't limit the people, but limits the government from their actions, mm-hmm. not the other way around. Mm-hmm. You don't need to declare your right to farm. It's inherent in the fact that you are a living, breathing being. Absolutely. So that's the problem with this thing, folks, is this is basically another. Listen, that gun law they're trying to pass in Washington that Toomey and and Manchin proposed, they're calling that the firearms assurance bill. So don't ever be (laughs) fooled by the name of the bill. That's exactly correct. You know, we are are definitely in the double speak and double think portion of the programming. Absolutely. You know, they call it one thing and it means exactly the opposite. So I just, hey, I want to thank everybody for the action that they've taken on this because it has been effective. Just keep going a little while longer. Absolutely. And let's just get this thing done and get it killed, right? Yes. Yes. So uh, Jason uh, Smith will be at the Lincoln Day event in, um, uh, what city is that? The the Lincoln Day event. Oh, right here in West Plains? He's going to be there. So why don't you ask him who his corporate sponsors are when you you attend the Lincoln Day event? (laughs) He might have an interesting answer. Of course, I'm sure it'll turn out there'll be none, but, you know, I believe that like I believe that the uh, chief of police or the state uh, patrol here didn't really actually give our information away. And they absolutely did. Thank you so much, Doreen. You're, you're a godsend to us and our listeners. Thanks. Well, thank you, Michael. Everybody have a great day. Okay, folks, we'll be back tomorrow. This is KBMV Birch Tree is the Ozark's best news talk, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Food, not